Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Claudia Monicelli, the host of this podcast, Let's Talk Soul. And twice a month, I have guests on. And like I always say, they give us a different take on what the soul is, how to take care of the soul. Is the soul, does, are we souls with a meat suit, you know, and all different kinds of assets, aspects of what the soul is and what it is to be a soul who is incarnated. Um, today I'm speaking with Tim Bowie from, he's talking to us from California. Tim, say hello to our audience. Hello everyone and uh, thank you for having me on your podcast today. A pleasure, a pleasure. Now, who is this young man? You don't have the benefit of a video, but I'll tell you he's a young man. Well, I don't know. Maybe he made a pact with the devil (laughs) and he's really a hundred years old. (laughs) All right, uh, Tim Bowie is- Ancient secrets. (laughs) Yeah, right, secrets. Is a serial, serial entrepreneur, which means that he just starts up things, I guess. But we'll, he'll tell us, a psychonaut, whatever that may be, and he'll talk to us about that, biohacker and practitioner of meditation, and we'll be talking to him about that. And uh, he is also a practitioner of martial arts and has been together with meditation for more than 25 years. So I'm thinking, my God, if it's for more than 25 years, you must be really, it is a, it is a pact with the devil, really. <laughs> okay. So I think he, meditation keeps you young. <laughs> <laughs> well, that then you're really going to have to give us some pointers. <laughs> Okay, so he currently leads a coaching and leadership development company called High Performance Humans. Um, with, it has a mission to provide personalized, transformative personal develop, development and leadership programs that equip people with the tools and support needed to achieve their goals and lead with purpose. Okay, this word purpose keeps coming out when we mention the soul. Now the company's Mm. training programs strive to create a ripple effect. Um, I like that domino effect, a ripple effect of empowerment and transformation that goes far beyond, extends far beyond our individual, its individuals, uh, individual clients and into the world. So you start with the one person and the aim is to um, go outward like the spokes of a wheel. Okay, now I've spoken enough, Tim. Um, (laughs) Now, truly, I'm not going to ask you your age. That wouldn't be nice because then you would have to ask me mine and I wouldn't tell you. (laughs) Okay, so um, have you always lived in California? I grew I mean, I, I grew up here. I was born in Hawaii. So uh-huh. I came here when I was like one or two. Uh, so I call myself a uh, pineapple. Uh, <laughs> grown over there and imported over here. And okay. now I reside here to be consumed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I have lived in Northern California, which is, is where I happen to be today visiting oh. my family. Um, uh-huh. But for the most part, I live in Orange County, which is a place uh-huh. by LA, not too far out. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, it's it's beautiful there. There's lots of oceans. The mountains are only I, I a hours away as well. Know, but uh, <laughs> um, I tell everybody in in my first life, I was a, a conference interpreter and I worked for the State Department in the United States. Oh. And I remember today, as if it were today, the test that the State Department gave me. And interpreters yeah. usually use a note taking technique or or simultaneous interpreting, and the text was all about Hawaii and mm. how when, if I were to become an interpreter, I would have to go and bring guests to Hawaii. And it was all about plantations and and um, uh, uh, pineapples. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. <laughs> and I never <laughs> did get to Hawaii, though. <laughs> All but right. you still remember it, so oh, I God, think you're yeah. all right. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still remember it all right. Um, now, you say you're a serial uh, entrepreneur, so that means that you have created several companies? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, um, I mean, most recently I had a couple of e-commerce companies that we sold like fitness products. We mm -hmm. built everything from like customizable vibrating foam yeah. rollers all the way to like just dumbbells, weights, uh -huh. like workout equipment, platforms, like everything like that. So, okay, and then, so that's no longer yeah, in existence or does it exist still? Uh, yeah, they, they exist still. Okay. Um, I sold them, so I don't operate them or I'm not involved in them personally. Okay, anymore. so you sold the company? Yeah, there's two okay. companies. Oh, okay, okay. So now we're with this little baby here. And how long has this company, uh, this, uh, I guess we could call it a uh, company, yeah, High Performance yeah. Humans. How, uh, how long has it been open? It's still pretty new uh, in concept. Um, I've been working on it for about three months. Uh -huh. um, we're still in a very early stage uh -huh. right now, just getting all the, basically like all the training together so that mm -hmm. I can uh, transfer that training into um, other trainers within uh -huh. the company. And um, we're having a really good success with the with, with what we're doing. You know, it's mm -hmm. been really <laughs> it's been really cool actually. Like to get these what was so cool about it? What was so interesting? Okay, so uh, I was just last week. I was at a hot springs, um, very interesting hot springs in the mountains. Is kind of like a nudist one, but I didn't. Yeah. Well, I didn't. In nobody California? told me that coming into it. In yeah, coming into it, I didn't know. So I was just like, okay, all right, this is what's happening. Um, and then I got a text message from a client and he was like, Hey, like, I wanted to talk to you. Like, is it possible? It's not like anything important or anything. It's just like, I wanted to share something with you. I was like, yeah, like I had to like walk like 20 minutes up to get reception uphill, but that's fine. Like I'll do it. So then I go hiking and I get the reception so I can make the phone call. And he's like, yo, this month I, we just had like a hundred million or sorry, uh, a $500,000 month. Mm. And he's like, he's like, he's like, I'm like, I don't know what happened. Like my, my, my wife asked me and like, you know, my friends are asking me and like, I just tell them like, I woke up one day like this, but I know that it's from our work together. And he was just like, With he you. just called he me. A client. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he just called me to share, you how know, nice. how grateful he was. Yeah. yeah and nice. like, just like trying to like feedback into That's like, good. he's just asking how I'm doing and like good. trying to. Like, what can we do together? Or what can I do for you? Or like, what, what are some ways nice. I can help you nice. brainstorm? So it's just like, it, yeah. it comes back, you know, it's like a full yeah, sure, circle sure, and sure. the feedback loop is strong. So, I mean, yeah. this is, yeah, I mean, I get stuff like this all the time. Um, I just got one so yesterday now, too. But. You, um, so let's say you came to California when you were one or two years old. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that means you did all your schooling in that area, in the California area, more or less? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, when, uh, did you start with the practice of meditation? Because mm. and I'm, maybe I didn't say it in the, in, in, in the introduction, but, um, he's highly involved with meditation and swears by it. And I wanted him to talk to us about it. Maybe different yeah, kinds of meditation. <laughs> when you started, did it happen in a time of your life? that was uh depressing a depressing start time for you you mm -hmm. saw the bottom of the barrel you know what mm -hmm. how how did were you introduced to it and what kind of meditation yeah I've, uh i was introduced to it via google uh -huh. <laughs> i just looked up how to meditate um i had my Why? first transcendental what experience you... when i was like 12. oh 12 okay so what happened at 12. Uh, in that transcendental experience or just like it what was in, going on in my life at the time in that experience uh, yeah um, I so basically like I was doing something called Zazen meditation where you're counting breaths and in this meditation it's just you're counting to 10 and, mm -hmm. and an exhale and an inhale is like one and two breath work. and so you count to 10 you reset and what i started noticing was that my breath became slower and slower and with less air and less air mm -hmm. and then i started to notice that it almost felt like i didn't need to breathe anymore like a when millimeter say, of movement out of my nose when mm -hmm. you say with less uh, with less air meaning uh, after you exhale you didn't inhale or you inhaled less. Can you describe? It was it was just, it was slowly less and less. So like a full breath would be like, 
<laughs> it's like a really long breath, right? Okay. So like it would be like each one would take like a fraction off, a fraction off, and another fraction off until slowly it was so the movement of air into my lungs and out of my lungs was so small that mm -hmm. I could barely tell that it was happening. That you were almost breathing. to the point where I felt like I wasn't breathing anymore. Okay. That's what I felt like. I felt like I, I just, it was kind of scary. It was like, I don't think I need to breathe anymore, but I'm just going to slow down and whatever happens, happens. And mm -hmm. I just slowly just. So this uh, breath work led you to have an experience, a, part, a transcendental experience. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it was an out of body experience where I was just completely inside of the internal state of reality where like I held my own, like, say, like five or six senses internally, not relating to what I could see, what I could hear outside of me, but everything was inside of me. And um, it was just um, outside of time, really, because it was outside of a sense of self. It was outside of a sense of, you know, any relationship to it, any, any of the outer world yeah. stuff. And um, as soon as I had a question, the question was answered and it would just happen instantaneously. Uh-huh. And it was just like a series of like, example. what am I doing here? Give me an example. When I had a question. <laughs> oh, like a simple, really simple question is like, like, why am I here? What's the point of life? And it was like, the point of life is to have experience. It was just like things like that, just like really okay. fast, really mm -hmm. clear. Mm -hmm. And like just one liners. And I was just like, what is this? And then by the time I snap out of it, it was around like 5 p.m. So still daylight. And then when I got out of it, it was like seven or eight. And it's like the sun had already gone down. Mm -hmm. But it felt like it was only like a few 10 seconds. or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just, it just felt like just, it, it was very hard to explain and it still is. Um, but I think that, that created a lot of problems. I think like, because when you have certain types of experiences, you want to go back to them or you kind of use mm -hmm. that as like, this is well, where I've been. Uh, well, so let well, me just, let yeah. me just get back there. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then you go travel. looking for That's it. Where that's the bitch about time travel. You just go yeah. there and meet somebody. Where? How could I get there? Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now let let me go under the surface here. Um, who were you at twelve years old? What was going on in your life when? Uh, yeah, I think like you know, my parents were are immigrants and they came here. Um. I feel like they hadn't fully matured, you know, just, I think, coming up from like a developing from country where? from Vietnam. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, to, to Hawaii and then the United States. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Or are they uh, still in Hawaii and you came over by yourself? I mean, I mean, uh, they're, uh, they're here in Sacramento uh -huh. in okay. California. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so at you, you, you knew that all your life that didn't create any problems for you did it uh well i think like because they were very focused on making money that uh -huh. we weren't really close my parents and i they were okay. just working a lot okay and mm -hmm. so i was pretty much just observing them from the outside yeah, sure. but also trying to figure out life on my own while while conforming mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. their rules yeah so it was uh, a it was just me age, trying to figure out i my could life. remember myself at that age 12 yeah. 13 14 and my parents too were immigrants um we mm -hmm. we settled in the new new jersey new york area and mm -hmm. i could remember they had these jobs and when they were home i could just remember them sleeping on the couch both of them one on one couch one on the other couch so when we got out of school, there was no, no interaction. There was, it was, mm -hmm. um, it, they were tired, you know? And so yeah. uh, that's what you went through, you know, did you have any siblings, brothers, sisters? Yeah, I had, um, well, like in my household, I had my sister, uh, who I'm here visiting now today. Yeah. Cool. I'm anyway, bells. um, <laughs> and, uh, we, she was one year apart from, from me, but oh. we were almost like rivals. So we weren't close. We were kind of close, but we were close. Like we were going through the same hell together, but yeah. we were also okay. rivals for attention uh -huh. and for uh, grades so, and, and things like so that. So this was sort of, um, that was high school. Were you in high school or the end of middle school? Right. It was like middle school still. Yeah. 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 So um, when you, after this happened, after this out of body mm -hmm. experience and all of that, the breath work 
we were talking about meditation. Was it a hop, skip, and a jump to meditation, or was were there more years of uh, googling and understanding what to do? And uh, because there's so many different kinds of meditation. Yeah, there. I mean, there's there was a huge path to seeking for a long time. There still is. I'm I'm always learning, always trying mm -hmm. to figure out like what is another approach. I think like I've just pretty much boil it down at this point to like two dimensions uh -huh. one is like the dimension of like insight and sort of uh transcendental experiences or you could call them uh cities uh which is like a term in uh, indian uh philosophy for like supernatural power and uh there's another i think axis or dimension of just understanding the base state of consciousness without the projection of a self and so i think there's two uh axes or dimensions and so you're talking um, about meditation now how you chose mm -hmm. what type of meditation to do that you're talking about uh, yeah that. Mm -hmm. go ahead i think i think like on a first principle basis like everything it all goes down to either of those two things like either one you're seeking in your meditative aspect and you're trying to get more insight different types of experiences mm -hmm. and that can lead to you know having you know, different types of supernatural ability mm -hmm. like clairvoyance or whatever and then there's another one another type where you're just trying to distill the essence of your soul and who mm -hmm. you are and mm -hmm. so there are those i think two and so like every type of meditation either leads you back to one of those uh avenues of uh, self-discovery okay but there's also meditation that is not geared toward self discovery but discovery of mm. other things and that would be the second one then well yeah i i guess so so why um i'm trying to think how to phrase this um mm. how can meditation of the kind that you're explaining make our mm -hmm. lives better well i think there's no there's no there's no such thing as truth um mm -hmm. so like there's no there's sense. nothing i can really tell you what do you mean i think like objective truth okay really i mean there are some objective truths right like but there are... i think everything is impermanent or something or well we are well, they say mathematics is not even objective so um we can basically talk about Relative subjective truth. truths yeah so but internally there is an internal truth like i have my own truth you have your own mm -hmm. truth it doesn't that's mine doesn't apply to yours and yours doesn't necessarily yeah. apply to mine hey, they can but within my own frame of reference yeah. my truth is what guides my life and the more connected i am to that truth and yeah. the more clarity i can have in my life and so with meditation you're developing self-awareness which is the truth like yeah. your key to understanding reality and a sense of truth for yourself. So I think with meditation, we are getting a peek behind the veil or the curtain or taking a look under the hood of what is going on in our experience. And when we take, when we take time to go behind the veil, we might bring something back into our waking state. And in that process of bringing things back, we bring back wisdom because mm -hmm. like every memory every experience without the emotional charge is just wisdom and so when we go back behind the veil we take these experiences that we have with us behind the veil and we come back come back with wisdom and so i think it's really just this process of turning our life into wisdom so that we can be empowered by our story and everything that has come before that moment and i guess uh, learning about us a story uh, and I'm not sure how far meditation can bring you to understand the story. But you um, wrote to me a topic that you would like to talk about. And you wrote why we make everything harder than it needs to be. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, hmm, is this a naive topic or not? Let's see here. Go ahead. Why do we make everything harder? than it needs to be. I think there's an implicit belief that we need to work hard to for, make, for making things happen. And I think that there is 
it, within our body, we have like the parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system and the, yeah. and the nervous system, right? And so in Eastern, that is called the yin and the yang. And mm -hmm. we, we in the West, we overly identify with the yang that we must make everything happen. We must do everything. Otherwise, things won't happen for us. Yeah. I think a good example of this isn't working out. Like you see a lot of people, yeah. they go to the gym and they work out really, really, really hard. And then the next day they're sore. Well, like being sore the next day is just a sign that you worked out too hard because yeah. you should be sore the second day, not the first day. And so the idea but is that why, you're actually getting strong. You're mm -hmm. saying the why is because we were, uh, let's say, socially uh, taught to do that. Is that mm -hmm. what you mean? Why we make everything in a happen. sense? It's it's that it's it's that we we feel uh, the sense of independence and the sense of agency to the point where we don't understand that things come together by themselves. Uh -huh. So, in the example of working out, you like you don't get stronger when you're working out. You get stronger when you're resting. When uh -huh. your body is rebuilding those muscles, yeah. is when you're getting stronger and those neural connections and getting rid of all the inflammation that you created, mm -hmm. that's when you get strong. But people think that they get strong in the gym. And this is sort of this whole representation of this problem where you think you're getting stronger doing the work, but you're not. Mm -hmm. The work is there to serve as a component of skill set building. Yeah. But the actual development of skill, the actual development of strength and resiliency that happens yeah. when you're not there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have here, I'm going to tell my audience to look for you at your website, and it's Tim Din Bui. That's T I M D I N B U I dot com. What will we find if we go to your website? There's a free assessment, mm -hmm. and the assessment is in one of six areas of life. It could be relationships, parenting, mm -hmm. personal development, and it just basically tells you the three qualities that would be most important to you based on your answers mm -hmm. to having more confidence and more fulfillment in life based on what you're you're sharing so it just kind of breaks down based on your values and what is meaningful to you mm -hmm. what are the components of that that would be really meaningful for you to develop and it helps you rate them and so there you just have a direction to kind of look at life and in, mm -hmm. in terms of because we have something called a reticular activating system which mm -hmm. is basically just our mind focuses on certain things. And so now that you have that information, you can see how can this experience like fulfill my need for like this quality of mind, whether that's, mm -hmm. I don't know, something like wisdom or fun or joy or happiness, like how can this experience fulfill that? And so you can come back into alignment, back into presence with whatever that experience is, knowing that that is an experience that is fulfilling you on a level that is important for you. Mm -hmm. So. What else will they find? They'll find a way to contact you, right? A little bit about yeah. you. What else is there? Uh, I mean, there's a link to my Instagram. My Instagram has um, it has like free guides, um, breath work. We have an eight week program for breath work. It's free mm -hmm. as well. I have a lot of free things because I don't, I don't want to be like a gatekeeper of information or whatever was helpful for me on my journey. Like if people they want to just figure it out by themselves if they don't have the money or mm -hmm. you know whatever the case is if they're a do it yourself or i i i want to give everybody like uh -huh. uh, the tools that they need and i don't need to charge for it if, you know if they want to uh -huh. see me then that's a different story but like i everything is out there so there's worksheets um that we're working on right now but we have worksheets for the video program as well so it's a eight week program you just uh -huh. follow it on youtube and um you just basically learn how to do HRV breathing to mm -hmm. get in a connection with the flight or flight system and um, get in connection with flow state, which is something I talk about a lot as well. So there's just a lot of um, content on flow state as well. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and tell us a little bit about your life and the work that you do. And I hope that our paths will cross again, Tim. You have a good one. Thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye.